It was absolutely fantastic having Lord Nigel Crisp there to formally launch the Medical Equipment Partnerships Program. Um, he's a really prominent figure in the world of global health, and he's a fantastic advocate for human resources for health, particularly in developing countries. So to have him there as the person who gave the keynote on the second day of the conference and who formally launched the program was just great because it really kind of positioned what we're doing with biomedical engineering and with medical equipment partnerships in the wider global health community, if you will. These grants are really exciting because there's a massive need for training of biomedical engineering professionals, um, and that includes technicians and technologists and engineers, so these people with technical expertise at every level. There's a massive need for training. There are massive gaps, and this is the Medical Equipment Partnerships Program is one innovative way of trying to meet some of those training needs by harnessing the skills and expertise of UK biomedical engineering professionals um, and having them work in partnership to do training and build up systems in hospitals in the developing world. The scope of the problem with medical equipment in developing countries is massive, so most estimates say that um, 50 to 80 percent of equipment in developing countries isn't working. Um, and in lots of countries in sub-Saharan Africa, up to 80 percent of the equipment in the entire country is donated. Um, there are lots of reasons why equipment isn't working, um, and one of them is just that most of these hospitals and health systems lack the trained biomedical engineering professionals to be able to not just do maintenance on the equipment and keep it working, but to actually manage it and plan for it effectively. So lots of medical equipment donations are very well intentioned. People see a need and they want to try and address it, but they don't always necessarily ask the right questions from the beginning and they don't necessarily um, make donations in a very appropriate way. These grants are an example on a modest scale of what can be done um, to try and change not just build up people's training, but change behaviors around medical equipment in developing country hospitals and health systems because you can't deliver services without functional equipment. You can't um, diagnose patients, you can't monitor them, you can't treat them unless you have equipment that's actually working in your hospitals. And so one of the reasons that these grants are so appropriate is because they're meeting a very specific need. So they're already based on institutional partnerships. There's already a relationship between the biomedical engineers here in the UK and their counterparts overseas. And the projects have been designed in response to the needs of the overseas partners. Um, and so, for example, they're offering training on maintenance, so based on what equipment is in each hospital, they're looking at what type of support they need to be able to be trained up to maintain the equipment, um, as well as some more kind of high-level advocacy work at a hospital level and at a health system level, because um, it's one thing to be able to train someone who's looking after equipment in a hospital, but it's quite another to empower them enough that they're actually talking to administrators and senior level decision makers within the hospital and giving them input at the beginning of the process to say, if we're receiving new equipment, we need this type of training, we need these type of tools, these are the types of things you should be thinking about. One of the things that I find most exciting about these grants is there's going to be a massive element of empowerment for the people who are being trained. Um, it's going to elevate their profile, not just within their hospital, amongst people who would go to them for their services, so doctors or nurses who would ask them to fix something, but actually really positioning them within the overall workforce in their hospital or their health system um, to try and engage them more when they should be engaged.